Welcome to Tech Tools for Success, preparing for next generation assessments. If you have a Chromebook, desktop computer, or other electronic device, please log in and open the internet at this time. You will benefit more from this video if you can work along with what I am explaining. You may also pause or rewind this video at any time. Today's tutorial will review digital resources available to you on the fifth grade science performance-based assessment. When I use the word assessment, I am using that in place of tech, test. This is a digital assessment or test and may be different from tests that you are used to taking on pencil and paper. It does have tools though that will help you to better perform on the assessment. That is the purpose of this tutorial. Today, we are learning about the tools available to us on the new Ohio State tests. I strongly urge you to play with the resources and tools available to you on the test today. You do not want to waste time on the test learning how to use these features. That is what this tutorial is for. The first thing that I need you to do is log into this website, nextgen.nuwaka.org. Again, that website is nextgen.nwoca.org. Once you've logged into that website, this should appear on your screen. What I need you to do is click on Ohio Online Field Test Portal 4 through 12. This is located along the left side of your screen. So go ahead and click. Today, we're going to sign in as a guest. To sign in as a guest, we see session ID already has guest for us, so just click sign in. Now, you need to choose your grade level. For today's video, I will choose grade level 5. Then, I will click yes. On this page, you're going to see all of the different science tests that you're going to be taking this spring. Notice one says Start G5 Science PBA. That stands for Performance-Based Assessment. That's the first science test you'll take this spring. The second box says Start G5 Science EOI, or End of Year Test. You'll take that later in the spring, closer to summertime. For today, we want to practice using the PBA. So let's click on PBA. We begin to see some of the settings and resources that will be available to us on this page. I encourage you to talk with your teacher about which settings you should choose. Some of you may have different settings, but remember, your teacher will direct you which settings to choose. So, let's talk about the first option that we have on here is this print size. If I click on that drop down arrow, it's going to give me more choices. The higher the level, the more zoomed in the print size on today's test will be. I'm going to leave it where it is. Next is masking. We want masking on for today's tutorial. This will allow you to cover parts of the test as you take it today. The next choice that we have is color choices. Notice that there are several different color choices available to you. I'm going to use black on white. That means black letters like you see in front of you with a white background. There are other options of color choices. Again, I encourage you to talk with your teacher about what color choices fit you best. They're going to know what will help you do the best on the test. So I'm going to choose black on white. All the other settings are going to be standard. So let's click select. Now this page is going to ask us to review our settings. 
we want to make sure these are the settings that we want. Print size is the same. I turned masking on and also my color choice of black on white. Now, we need to scroll down to the bottom of the page. On the day of the test, you will have the option of using a mouse to scroll down. On a mouse, there's a center wheel that you can use to scroll down. If you push that wheel back towards you, it slides down. If you move that wheel up, it slides up. On the Chromebook, you can use the trackpad. If you take your pointer finger and the finger next to it, you can take two fingers and swipe along the Chromebook trackpad. Why don't you try that right now? So take two fingers and swipe up or swipe down. All right, then let's click yes, start my test. This page is going to tell us what the test instructions and help features are. At this time, I would encourage you to pause the video, read through the test tools that are available to you, and also a description of those tools. Now that you've reviewed through the tools that are available to you and the description of them, we're going to scroll all the way back down to the bottom of the page. Let's click Begin Test Now. Here we've arrived at question one of the performance-based assessment for fifth grade science. So, the first icon or tool that I want you to notice is up in the top right corner of the test. That is the question mark icon. Together, let's click on that icon. Notice when I click on the question mark icon, the help guide appears. This help guide is what you just read through with your teacher. It has a layout of the screen in front of you. It also has the tools that will be available to you and a description of each of those tools. Now, to X out of this, or to eliminate this help guide, I will simply click the X button. Let's review another icon or tool that's available to us. We'll stay on this blue toolbar and we'll go over here to where it says questions. And then it has a drop down arrow. This feature allows you to jump from one question to any other question on the test. You will also be able to see if you have marked any questions for review to examine later. I will demonstrate, you, demonstrate to you later on how to mark a question for review. Throughout the test though, I would encourage you to answer the question if you understand it before skipping to other questions. But for the purpose of showing you this question drop down, I want you to take a look and move your cursor down to three. Click on three. This quickly takes us to the third question. Let's go all the way back to question number one. So I click my questions drop down bar and I click on the number one. So we can see we are back at question one. Here in blue it indicates to us that we're on question one. And also up in the question drop down box it indicates to us that we're on question one. Below the question drop down box, are the navigation tools. The back arrow and the next arrow allows us to move on to the next question. Click the next button. That takes us to question number two. If I click the next button again, it takes me to the next question, question number three. Let's practice using the, the back button now. Click the back button. It takes us to question number two. If I click the back button one more time, it takes me all the way back to question number one. The next button along the navigation toolbar is the save button or the save icon. Once you're comfortable with an answer that you've given, click save. So if I click save, it will automatically save the changes that I have made up until this point. The next icon I want you to understand is the pause icon. 
Together, let's click the pause icon. When I click the pause icon, this attention box appears. Notice that you have the ability to pause this test that you are taking. If you pause it for longer than 20 minutes, you will not be able to go back and make any changes. Now, if for some reason you make no changes to the test that you are taking for 20 minutes, the test will automatically save and pause for you. So if you wanted to continuously pause, I would click yes. But for the purpose of today's tutorial, we don't want to pause, so we would click no. The last icon up here is the end test button. When you click the end test button, this will turn in the test. So notice I clicked it. You have clicked this button. Click yes to continue to the next page. Click no to keep working on your test. We want to click no. We are not done with the test at this time. So I clicked no. Let's stay along the top and look now at the test tools that are available to us. First, let's look at masking. This allows you to cover part or parts of the question. Some of you may use your hand, a pencil, or a piece of paper on a traditional paper and pencil test to do this. Let's activate the masking tool and see how this works. To activate it, I click on masking. Notice now that the masking icon is highlighted in red. To mask the question, I click and then I drag with my, with my hand over my mouse the part that I want masked. As long as this masking icon is highlighted in red, anywhere I click will start to mask. That may become a bit frustrating for you. So if once you've masked the area that you want, you may want to deactivate the icon by clicking on it. To remove these masked areas, I simply click the X on each box, and it removes that area. The next tool that we will examine is the Notes tool. This would be similar to you writing in the margins or somewhere else on a traditional test that you take. Let's activate the Notes by clicking on it. Notice, once I click on Notes, a notepad appears. You can move this notepad anywhere that you like on the screen. I simply click on it and move my finger along the trackpad or click with my mouse and move my mouse. You can type in this box. Let's say you want to write down some of your ideas. I would type in my ideas. So if I want to save these ideas for later, I would simply click Save and Close. Now notice the notepad disappears. If I need to look back at those notes once again, I'll click Notes, and there are my ideas. Another way of getting rid of this is to hit Cancel, and that will eliminate this. Line Reader is another tool that's available to you on the test. I'm going to move to question number two to show you Line Reader. So the way we do that is you go to the Next button, and I click Next. So let's look at Line Reader. To activate Line Reader, I click on Line Reader. Many of you on a regular test or when you read, use your hand or a pencil or a piece of paper to keep your place when you're reading. Now, to move this Line Reader up and down, I use the arrows on the bottom right corner of my keyboard on my Chromebook. So use your arrow and press down. Notice when I press down, it goes down to the next line. If I want to go back up, I simply press the up arrow. To get rid of Line Reader, I simply click on Line Reader. Let's go back to question number one. The last two features on this bar are the zoom out and zoom in button. If I am having trouble viewing something and I need to make it bigger, I can click zoom in. Zoom in some more. And then I can click zoom out as well.
Now, let's take a look at the context menu. These are options that are also available to you. This icon with the three lines that looks like the settings icon for Google Chrome is your context menu. Click on context menu. Notice there are two options available to us, tutorial and mark for review. Let's click tutorial. Now this is a tutorial on how to answer the question. It gives you hints on the style of question. It does not give you a hint of what the answer is, but it does give you hints on how to answer. Notice on that red box, it gives you written directions. On the screen behind you, it will actually show you what to do. So this is a multiple select. You will select one of those columns for each row. For years, you've probably been told only choose one answer per question. These multiple select questions, you need to have a check in each row, much as showed by this video tutorial. They have these video tutorials on these tests for each type of question that you'll be answering. So, I would encourage you today to practice watching the tutorials so that you are not slowed down on the day of the test. But, if you need to watch the tutorial on the test because you don't know how to answer, I would encourage you to do that. Let's X out of here. Another option in the context menu is to mark for review. For each question, you should read the question carefully. Select the boxes to identify which organism, if any, performs each energy action described in the table. Let's say I do not know this answer. After reading the question, all the possible answers, I have no idea how to answer this question. Well, what I would do is click this context menu and click Mark for Review. Notice, when I click Mark for Review, it bends down this box to indicate to me that I have not answered that question or I need to go back and review that question. It also writes up here in the question drop-down that number one has been marked for review. This would be similar to you circling a question on a traditional pencil and paper test. So we know we need to go back to this one. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you how to answer this. So I'm selecting the boxes to identify which organism, if any, performs each energy action described in the table below. So I would read column one there. Row one uses dead matter for energy. Well, we can look across here and choose which one. So if I believed the answer was rabbit, I would select rabbit. If I thought about it again and thought, hmm, maybe not rabbit, maybe it's grass, to change my answer, I simply click that box. If I want to remove rabbit as a possible answer, I would click that checkbox. Let's say there was something in here that signaled to you what the answer would be, something like energy. What I could do is I could double-click the word energy. I'm sorry, you cannot do that in, that in the question part. Up here, if I find organism very important, I could double-click on the word organism. Those three icons that just appeared for me will not appear for you on the test. So try to ignore those. I apologize for those. What I would then do is click on Context Menu and click Highlight Selection. Notice how now it highlights the word organism. Another way to do this would be to right click. If you're using the Chromebook, take two fingers again and tap the trackpad. Notice it's like right clicking. If you're going to use the mouse on a computer, you simply right click. I can remove this by clicking reset highlighting. So for question number one, for this checkbox, you would go line by line and answer all parts that might apply. Remember, 
Read each question carefully. Answer all parts of the question. I'm still not sure if this is what I want for my answer to number one. So I'm going to leave this as marked to go back later. The second type of question here, or the second question on this test, asks us to look at a diagram. So it's important to look at all parts of the diagram, just as your teacher has always told you to do. Now, I have to scroll down. You may want to try to scroll down to the bottom of every page with a question on it so you see what you need to do. So question number two asks us to identify the current season at location X. So I have to find location X. Then explain what causes the season at location X. And then type my answer in the space provided. If you haven't noticed, this is a two-part question. I have to identify the current season. So you need to make sure you do that. So what I might do is I might say in here, the current season is, and then I would, so I'll type the current season is. So now let's pretend I finished typing that answer. I can use part of my tools up here to mask that I've identified the current season. So I activate masking. I click here. And now I will deactivate it. So I said the current season is. And I did that by typing. This is an extended response question. I know because I masked out identify the current season that I've answered that part of the question. I still need to explain what causes the season. So I would then do that next. So I would hit enter and say this is caused by and then I would continue to answer my question. Once I finished, I may activate masking, cover up this so that I know I've answered both parts of the question here. Now, when you type in Google Drive or on a Google Doc, there's certain features that are there to help you. This test, this performance-based assessment, has certain features to help you as well. If I wanted to bold a word, let's say season, I can use the big bolded B, and I'd click B for bold. If I wanted it italicized, I could italicize. If I wanted it to be underlined, I could underline by clicking the underlined U. To remove those, I could simply click those buttons again, or I could click Remove Format. I could also make this into numbered or bolded points. To do that, I'm simply going to highlight the entire selection. If I click on the numbering, it makes it a numbered list. I can change that to bulleted, or I can remove that as well. So I need to indent this first paragraph, and I could do this a number of ways. One of the ways I could do it is by using the indent button over there. Or if I wanted to move it back, I could decrease the indent. I also have other options available to me. For these options, I need to highlight a word. So I could cut that word. I could remove it. Oh, if I wanted to, to redo that, I simply click the undo button, and now it's back. I can copy that word, and then I can paste that word if I'd like. I want to eliminate that, so I'm going to cut that. You also have spell check available to you. It does not automatically spell check for you. Now, I know many of you probably noticed when I typed a word in my answer, I typed the word incorrectly. I did do that on purpose. The reason I did it is because I want to show you how to use spell check. To use the spell check, Simply highlight the entire passage. 
then click ABC. That is the spell check. Now notice it has highlighted the word that it thinks is spelled incorrectly. To find out the correct spelling, I click on the word. And notice it gives me different options. This top option is the proper way to spell season. So I click on it. And it changed it for me. Now, to be able to type again, I need to deactivate the spell check. For science, sometimes you will have to write different symbols. This is a special character feature that you have. So if you wanted to write something like a fraction, you can do that by finding the fraction symbol here. There are other symbols that are available to you as well, like the equal sign, the at sign. If you look over to the right, you see here it highlights the word and makes it larger for you. So here we have the different fractions that you may or may not use. Again, to cancel out of here, I simply click Cancel. So I have answered this question fully, and I will move on to the next one. Before I do that, I want to lock my answers in. So I will click Save. And this saves all of my answers up until this point. Let's move on to question number three and see what type of question this is. Notice that the question does not appear fully on the screen. So I will need to scroll down. Well, this one does. A student measures the distance traveled by several toy cars in different time periods. Enter numbers in the table to compare the average speed of each car, from 1 being the lowest average speed to 4 being the highest average speed. Again, on the test, if you did not know how to answer this question, the style of the question, you could click context menu. Click on tutorial. And this will show you a video tutorial on how to answer this style of question. For time's sake, we're not going to watch this tutorial, but you can watch it on your own. So enter numbers in the table, compare the average speed of each car from one being the lowest average speed to four being the highest average speed. So in these boxes, you would type a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4. So you would have to figure out which is fastest based on the distance traveled and the amount of time that it took to travel. If you were confident with your answer, you would hit Save. And then you can move on to the next question. Notice this next question. If I look in the drop-down, it is linked with two other questions. Also over here, it is linked with two other questions. So, as always, it's important that you read all of the directions and all of the information before you take this part of the test. So, Again, if we did not know how to answer this style of question, we would click on the context menu and the tutorial. But notice, this is starting to take me quite a bit of time watching all of these tutorials. That's why we're going through this today. And that's why you can review these tutorials on your own. So I will X out of here. The tamarisk plant is an invasive plant species in western states. A scientist investigates different ways to control the tamarisk. Run the simulation to perform your own investigation on how to control the invasive tamarisk plant. Select how many tamarisk plants to introduce on a riverbank. Then select a type of control measure to take and click start. The observations and results of your investigation will be shown in a chart. Now notice over here there is a scroll bar. That means within the question, I need to scroll down. Whenever you see this, 
you constantly need to scroll down to make sure that you are seeing all parts of the question. So this is going to have this is going to run a simulation for you. It's like an experiment that's done on the computer. So I would click the number of tamarisk plants introduced. If I use zero first, and then I can use the control measures, I hit start. Now notice it fills out this chart below. It also changes up here. Let's change these to 200. Let's also change the control measures. We will hit start. It's collecting all of my data for me. So we see what, what happens here. It continues to fill out this chart and also change what this looks up like. So I will run another experiment. I change my control measures here. I hit start. Notice it's going to illustrate up in this video what is happening. And then down here, it will give us observations and results. So now you need to investigate the different control measures, the effect, I'm sorry, the different control measures have on the riverbank ecosystem. Identify the control measure that limits the invasive tamarisk plants with the least impact on the entire ecosystem. Then provide an observation that supports your identification. And you will type your observation here. So I will type the answer. I will allow your science teacher to review this question with you. Let's move on to the next question, though. Number six, observe the effects the tamarisk plant has on the ecosystem. A, click on the labels that describe the roles of the tamarisk plant. B, click on the impacts on the ecosystem to show what happens after the introduction of the tamarisk plant. Now notice, this left column here, the directions and the information stayed all the same for me as I went from one question to the next. I'm going to scroll down here to see what to do. So, A, click on the labels that describe the role of the tamarisk plant. So I have to click on one of these. And then I have to click on the impact. Notice how I just clicked on them. To remove that, I click on it. To delete my choice, I click on it. And I can change my answers. Once I'm confident, I will click Save. Let's make sure that we've answered all parts, questions four through six. So there's five. And... Number four here is the simulation that we did. Let's continue on to the next question. We answered number six, and we've locked in our answers. So now we're going to go to number seven. A teacher shows a student the following data about the speed of sound in air and water. You're going to look at these two tables. A lot of the questions on this performance-based assessment are going to ask you to look at two types of information or two sources of information and then produce an answer. I'm not going to review the tools available to you on this because we already did that in a previous question. These typing tools are still the same. Now, once I've gone through and cor correctly answered all my answers, I would encourage you to first click the questions drop down box. Look for any answers that you have marked for review and go back and complete those first. So number one, I have marked for review. Let's click on that. I will reread the question, look at all of my possible answers and change my answers to meet what I think is the best answer. Once I feel confident with that, Again, I will save my answers and then click Unmark Review Item. Now notice it changes it here and also up here. Now if I was done with the test, I would click 
and test. There is one more tool that I want to show you on this tutorial. That tool deals with multiple choice answers. There were no multiple choice questions in this practice test, but there may be one or two on your performance based assessment. To understand how to use the strike through, which is like crossing out an answer, we have to go back to this tab that's the Nuwaka Next Generation Assessment tab. If you X out of that tab, that's okay. Simply open a new tab and type in nextgen.nwoca.org. Again, we click on Online Field Test Portal. We're going to sign in again as a guest. We will select Grade 5. Then click Yes. If I'm moving too quickly for you, remember you can pause the video or rewind the video. This time, instead of choosing PBA, we're going to choose EOI. So choose EOI. Again, it's going to ask us to choose our settings. This may be a time when you can experiment with a different color choice. Only do this if your teacher says you are allowed to. I'm going to leave mine black on white, but I do want to change my masking to on. I will then hit select. Again, I will review my test settings and scroll all the way down to the bottom. I can use my mouse, my scroll wheel, or I can use a two-finger swipe on the Chromebook. I'll then click Yes, start my test. These are those test instructions again. So let's scroll all the way down to the bottom and click Begin Test Now. This is going to open up a test that has multiple choice questions. Again, we are doing this so that we can see how to use the strike through feature on a multiple choice question. So I will go to the next question, which is a multiple choice question. Remember, with each question, it's important to read all directions or the question carefully. Then, read each possible answer. For this question, it's a multiple choice question. You may have been taught in the past to cross out answers that you know are absolutely incorrect. I would encourage you to do that on the test. To do that on this electronic test or digital test, you simply right click. And on the Chromebook, a right click is take two fingers and tap the screen. When you do that, notice the strike through option appears. I'll click that and it draws a line or crosses out that answer. If I believe letter B should be crossed out, I'll do it again and I'll click on strike through. To remove the strike through, you simply right click again and do undo strike through. And I'll try that one more time. So I right click on the trackpad of a Chromebook, that's a two-finger tap, and click Undo Strike Through. Now, once I am totally done with my test, I would click End Test. I hope that this video tutorial has made you more comfortable in the test options that are available to you on your science test. I want to wish each of you good luck when you take these tests. I know you'll do wonderful.